Janet and Ed and I are here today because we're going to be talking about how to make jam and I'm going to show you how to make how I make jam. Um, making jam is something my mum taught me how to do and I think it's something that's easier to see see it being done to know what uh, how it is gelling is the important thing. All the other things we're going to be doing today are common to canning many many things so uh, you can apply those things too to uh, doing any kind of canning, pickles and fruit and, and other jams. So uh, to start off with, I just let you know that uh, we're doing one batch of raspberry jam. So it's five cups of uh, raspberries with one package of pectin and five cups of uh, sugar and I've got that all measured out. I have my jars that I've hand washed. They're already in a 225 degree Fahrenheit oven so that they'll be in there for 20 minutes and I already have my canner that we will be putting the finished jars into for uh, 10 minutes uh, starting to boil. So just what you need is you need a canner, you need a big pot. Um, I recommend getting a canning book. You can get these uh, wherever you buy your canning supplies. Bernard and Nimbal put out good ones. They have recipes and all the techniques so that you turn out with a good product that's safe to eat so you don't have spoilage or, or, or nasty things happening. Um, I like to get my jars ready. So they're in the oven like I said. So I'm going to need four regular sized rings with the lids and two large ones because that's what I had. I've already used up all my small jars because I've made most of my jam already. But I like to use the small jars for jam because you don't need a wide mouth. They're more expensive to buy these lids. And the big ones I tend to save for things like when I'm doing pears with Ed's wife because you want to be putting the pears in in a certain way or plums in in a certain way before you pour your syrup in. It's better to have a wide mouth for that. So I like to put them like this. I put them in my pot with my water so that the lids are in there and I have one of these lovely funnels so that you can fill up your uh, your jars easily. I use a clamp to lift, lift all these things out and my ladle and you have to have one of these to be able to grab onto your jars because they're stinking hot. You don't want to burn your fingers like I did before I had one of these when I was first setting up house here. All right, so we're going to go over to the, to the stove now and get this boiling. So pectin is something you add to your jam. I don't think it's cheating because pectin is a natural product that comes off the skins of fruit like apples and pears and I don't know what else but in olden days I think they just put peels into their jam to to make that happen so uh, we're lucky we can just open a package they come with a recipe in here and it tells you you know how much to put in so today like I said we're doing five five cups of raspberries and I'm gonna mash them just a little bit before I put the pectin in and turn on, turn on the heat. That's good enough. And like the recipe calls for, here is one package of pectin. So I'm going to stir that in. And turn on the heat because we want it to come to a boil. And when it comes to a boil, you boil it for a minute and then you add your sugar. And I have pre-measured my sugar because you need five cups of sugar, so I have that all ready to go. And I have my utensils all here heating up. My canner is getting very hot, so it'll be ready to finish off our jars. And the oven is on to 225, and the jars are in there, and they have been in there for about 10 minutes, so they only need another 10 minutes. So we'll just let this come to a boil, and we'll do the next step. All right, so this has just started to boil, so I'm going to add about a tablespoon of lemon juice. It's actually your lemon juice, my dear, because you gave me those lovely lemons that I juiced and froze. 
So I'm adding about a tablespoon of lemon juice. It just makes the flavor pop, I think. And once this is boiling after the uh, sugar is in, I will add a little bit of vegan butter uh, just to reduce the foam. So this is boiled for about a minute. And we are going to add the sugar, which I already measured. And stir that in. Sorry about the noise. Now once this starts to boil again, that's when we will time it for about another minute. As soon as this is dissolved, I'm going to show you what it looks like when we do our gel test on a plate. And then we'll be able to compare that with when it actually starts to gel. So I think all the sugar has been stirred in. And we'll just let that come up to boil again. Okay, so this has come to a boil now. We've got our pectin in there, some lemon juice, as well as the measured sugar. And it's come to a boil. So we are just going to show what the gel test looks like before it's actually gelling. So I just put a couple of drops on there and you can see that it's just kind of drippy. It's starting to foam a little bit, so you can add a wee bit of vegan margarine. If you like butter, you can do that too. Just to reduce the surface tension so those bubbles collapse. It's a chemistry thing. It's like when you're in the bubble bath and you got all those bubbles, then you bring the soap out and all of a sudden your bubbles disappear because they just can't stay up on the water anymore. So this helps reduce some of the foam. So we're going to boil this for about a minute. My mom also used to do this and she'd say if the two drips roll together, you're getting close. So they're, they're starting to come together there. Let's do another one of these and see. It's getting there. It's not going to take long. So it's boiling like mad now. And those drips are starting to come together. I think that's just skim off some of this foam. I think we'll be ready. And it's important not to make large, large batches because we're not a factory. We can't fill these jars fast enough to not spoil a jam. I think that if you overboil things, you ruin the flavor and the color. Just do another batch. It really doesn't take that long. So yeah, that's ready. We're going to turn the heat off. And now is when we have to get into action. So we're going to grab our, our tongs and get out our first jar. And our funnel and our ladle. Now, because this is a pint jar, we're going to leave half an inch, half an inch headspace, which is from the top of the jar to the jam. Okay, just going to show how you how I fill up another jar here at a different camera angle, which will be a little awkward. But you just fill it up to half an inch from the top of the jar. And like I said, we don't have to worry about bubbles because it's very liquidy. Sometimes if you are doing pears or other fruit that traps air, you might have to take a knife and uh, get rid of the bubbles. Okay, I'm cleaning the lip to make sure there's no residue. I'm grabbing my one of my regular can lids here. 
I'm putting that on. I do not touch anything that's going on the inside. I screw that on finger tight and use this to put it in the canner. And we will just carry on and fill them all up and then we'll process it. So I'm just going to add my water to top that up. You need one inch at least on top of your jars for depth for processing. And we're going to time that. So we just need 10 minutes. And then we'll take it out. Okay, so the timer's gone and it is done. Now we just take our tongs again and take them all out. And I have this lovely little rack that some clever craft person's made. But if you have too many jars or you don't have a rack like this, you can use newspapers, you can use um, tea towels, anything like that. Now, like I said, you do not touch those screw caps. This is just a little leftover that we're just going to eat later because it's not worth canning. We'll just put it in the fridge when it's cool. So there it is. They're done. These will wait for 24 hours before we take the screw, kit, screw uh, lids off and get them ready to put away. If you heard that, that is one of them sealing. And uh, it took about an hour maybe from start to finish from getting everything ready um, until the jam was done. So I think it's really worth it because jam's really expensive and fruit's available and you can get blackberries for free. And once you've done something like this, you can apply what we've done to canning lots of different things. So we'll see you tomorrow. Well, hi everybody. It's been at least 24 hours now, so we're able to put our jam away and uh, make sure it's set. So it's important to take the screw caps off. You don't store them in the screw caps because there can be materials in here and you need to use these again. Why buy a million of them? I can use these again tomorrow if I'm going to make another batch. So I don't have a lot of them and I reuse them and I wash them, make sure they're thoroughly dry and then I store them. So we will let those soak and what you do before you put these away is you give them a rinse and make sure that there's no material around here and just give them a wash. I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to put them in the sink and just give them a little wash. It's water, it's water and soap. Then I'm going to dry them off because we're going to label them. Now a lot of people like to give these to people with the screw cap on. Um, I, I just don't think it's a good idea. They don't really recommend that you store them that way. because bits of jam and things can, can linger underneath those screw caps. And again, you just want to use them again. So, once these are all dried and clean, I don't stick labels on because I find them hard to wash off and I'm lazy. So, instead of putting a label on here, I just write on the top. So what I put on here is 0820 and rasp, raspberry. And if you want to give some to somebody, what I recommend is getting these lids. You can buy them in boxes of eight. They're not that expensive. Here's ones for that size. And here's one for the wide mouth. And that way when somebody opens up their jar of jam, then they can, you know, they take this off, put this on, and then they can put it in the fridge. And they don't have to worry about this falling off or with the screw band or whatever. It's just, it just works a lot better. Some things that you buy do have screw, screw caps that will work for the small size, maybe for the large size. There are spaghettis that um, actually use canning jars so that the lids on those you can use for your canning. So that's the way I do it. Um, I hope you'll try making jam. It's really fast and easy. Can save you a lot of money. You don't need a lot of equipment because you just need to buy a few things, like I pointed out yesterday, the clamps and the jar, the jar grabbers, and uh, and a canner which you can use um, to can many things and pickles and uh, fruits and things like that. So buy yourself a book on how to do it, 
and um, start canning. I hope you had fun and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.